Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. And I have been hearing that bundling is more popular now than it ever was before. And that really excites me and that's great. But that also comes with a lot of false information. It comes with a lot of hey, just do this, just slap this together, just put this together. And there's a lot of talk in different Facebook groups about how to bundle and what to bundle and what to do this and that and the other thing. Well, of course, you guys know that I wrote the book on this stuff. I wrote the course and have done all these things and been bundling for many, many moons before this became more of a popular concept, which is fine. I love it. I love bundles and bundles work and they work if you do them correctly but there's a right and a wrong way to bundle products on Amazon. Number one, they have policies, they have rules. And I feel like there's so much talk about how to get around the rules to just get what you want. Now, if that's how you play in regular life and that's how you work in regular work, I'm not sure I wanna do business with you. Let's just be real. You want to obey the rules. Why? Because if you're successful, you don't have anything to worry about. You're not looking over your shoulder. You're not wondering, am I breaking the rules? Am I doing these things right? So understanding the Amazon bundle policy as it's written, and I will roll my eyes when I say as it's written, because Amazon doesn't tend to want to enforce their own rules on a regular basis. We know this, but that doesn't deter us and shouldn't deter us from creating bundles within their parameters like i said within their parameters so learning the bundle rules is really important um that's literally like the very first and second video of my course is learning the bundle rules as they are written by amazon the reason i say that is because when there's a problem and there will be you heard it first here folks i am not going to promise you sunshines and rainbows you are dealing with amazon the largest marketplace on the planet. So there's gonna be problems, there's gonna be issues, you're going to have issues with either listing or branding or something, right? But if you are following policy and you know policy and you know where to find policy, you can quote their policy back to them and say, hey, I'm following this rule. This is the rule that you have laid out in your terms of service and terms and conditions and your policies, and I'm upholding this policy. I would like you to uphold it as well holding them accountable. When you quote the policies back to them and show them, hey, I am following this, they'll either A, give you what you want, and this is when it comes to opening cases, things like that, or B, they will escalate it to a different team, which then will look at the policies and look at your listings and look at your things more thoroughly than just a canned response. I know we're getting more responses um, from Seller Central, Seller Support, <laughs> I laugh at that, uh, support. I don't know. I mean, they're getting better. I will be honest. Um, five years ago, uh, seller support made me want to cry like every day. They are getting a little bit better, but they're still trying to automate. They have 153 million Amazon partnered sellers. And that's a lot of customer service for just us as sellers, not, not to mention all the customers that we have and all of their customer service. But we too are customers of Amazon, even though they treat their real buyers a lot better than us. Oh, I digress. Anyway, bundle mistakes. You're going to have issues, right? So if you are following the rules of bundling on Amazon, then you shouldn't have any issues. And if you do, you're, you're able to, to quote the policies back to them and follow the rules, follow what they're saying. So if you're following the policies, you're less likely to get in trouble. You're less likely to have your listing ended, you know, IP claims, just we'll get into that in the first bundle mistake to avoid because that's what we're talking about today. The right and wrong way to bundle products on Amazon. So I'm just going to jump right in here. First of all, if you are not a subscriber of Mommy Income, hit the little bell on YouTube here and subscribe. I make videos every single week, every week. There's always something that you can learn here for consistently almost nine years now. I've been making podcasts and video casts and course content and blogs every week. So make sure you're subscribed. Mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe. That means you're not going to miss anything. You're not going to miss if I'm coming to your city to do a meetup. You're not going to miss if we're doing a special event. You're not going to miss it if I'm going to do some special training for you. So make sure you're subscribed. Mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe. 
make sure you're connected so that we can go there. Why? Because I'm not interested in just doing a bunch of fluff. I want to do business with you. I want you to do business so you can be successful because real life awaits you. Did you know that? Your business and how you make money and how you make a living is not all of life. Real life is out there and we do business. Well, I do business because I love doing business. I can't help it. I have been a business person since I was very young, an entrepreneur. I, I just can't help myself. I, I can't help not thinking of business when I'm doing stuff. It just, I like to handle my business, you know? But real life awaits hobbies and friends and family and the money that you're making from your business gives you resources to live your life. So that's why we're here. We're here to build a better life. And that starts a lot with building a better business so you can have more resources for life because money ain't going to make you happy money gives you options to find more peace in life just let that sink in for a second business is not life business is a part of life and i'm here to help shape you in this way so that you can enjoy your real life your whole life and not just stress about business because it ain't for everybody. It's not. It's a lot of people like, oh, you want to run a business, this and that, and what does it take? And you kind of, people come in kind of haphazard and just not sure. This is not for the faint of heart. It's not. So you guys that are all plugging along and still selling and still doing and still revamping and reworking and learning, my highest applause to you. I'm proud of you because this stuff ain't easy. I mean, I don't know that it's easy to go to a boss and sit in a chair or do whatever it is for eight hours and have them tell you what time to show up and what time to take a break and what time to take off and what days to take off. And even if you're sick, it doesn't matter or, you know, different things like I just this is better for me and some people like the other way. So anyway, bundling the right and wrong way to do bundling. So obviously I covered number one, know thy policies. Okay. You are playing on Amazon's playground. You are in their space. So whether you like it or not, you have to follow their rules or they can just remove you and they don't have to care. That's just the reality. No one else is saying that really, but it's the cold, hard truth. They don't have to care about you. I don't care if you're making them $10 million a year. They don't have to care. If you violate their policies and they don't like what you're doing and, you know, going through there, you actually even sign your terms of service document saying that you won't sue them, even if there's something wrong. Like you agreed to that when you signed up for your Amazon account. Most people don't read those terms of service, but I believe it's on like term number 22 or something that they list. It's like basically said, We can decide to stop doing business with you for any reason that we choose. So just knowing you're a guest in their house, that really is true. You're a guest in their house. And if you don't want to follow their rules, they can set you out like a bad dog. It sucks, but if we all play nice and play by the rules and do the things the right way, then they won't do that. They're not out to get you. If they hit you with a policy, either A, there's a bug in the algorithm and they will fix it and find it, or B, you violated some rule and you, you knowing or unknowingly, you're still responsible. It's like if you break the speed limit and get pulled over and the officer says to you, do you know how fast you were going? Or do you know what the speed limit is here? And you're like, no, I have no idea. Well, you were going 50 in a 35. Like you can't just claim ignorance. It is your responsibility to know the rules and obey them. So now that I got that like mean teacher thing out of the way, (laughs) the reality is that we just have rules and boundaries and policies to follow and there's reasons that they're written. And because of that, we need to obey and follow those rules. So don't try black hat items that people are saying out there that are different, that are like, oh, well, just do this or just do that or just eliminate this word or spell it wrong or do something to get around the rules. Amazon does not want you to constantly create all these new listings just so that you can try to reduce the competition for yourself. That's not why we create bundles, although that's a very good benefit of creating bundles is to reduce competition on what you're trying to sell. The reality is 
we don't create bundles just to get around rules. We don't create bundles to just try to eliminate the competition because you want to sell two bags of Hershey Kisses and there's already Hershey Kisses listed and you can't make money straight up on those because Amazon's dominated the listing or, you know, some big, you know, manufacturer or whatever is selling on that listing. So how about I create a three pack of three different ones over here and I call it this and I try to circumvent the rules. That's not how we do bundles. So I'm going to actually tell you the right way, the right reason first of how to create and why to create a bundle. Why? Because customers want them because it's easier for the customer to find something all together. So I always go back to like the main like bundle ideas um, that are just kind of that just make total sense, right? There's a difference between saying, okay, I want to sell it. Like it's, it's about to be Halloween, right? So Halloween, you see a lot of candy being sold on Amazon. Sometimes people are sell, are trying to create a Hershey's or Reese's kind of two packs of big bundles of candy. And they have big brands like Hershey's and Mars and, and, um, Reese's just these all, all these different brands. And they're trying to make up multiple combinations of things. Amazon does not want to cloud up the, catalog with a ton of different listings they don't want the customer to be confused about all of that so what is the reason we create bundles not to get away from competition and hopefully sell a few things and make a few dollars y'all there's millions and millions and billions of dollars to be made on amazon stop trying to fish in the same pond as everybody else that's how your margins get really slim and then people start getting really cutthroat why play there when you can play in a less crowded playground? Making your own bundles, looking at research by which customers are telling you, I want these products and I want them together. Y'all, there's a way to discover what the customers are looking for and how they're purchasing items together. So uh, look at a guitar bundle, for example. A beginner's guitar. Say at Christmas is coming. Someone wants to learn how to play a new instrument. A guitar is just low hanging fruit, right? Okay, so you've got your 10 or 12 year old. Maybe they want a beginner's guitar and they want all the things. So you could add all those things to the cart. You could have a, a just a guitar itself and a strap then maybe a soft case and then a, a tuner and some picks or you could sell it all together in a bundle and someone can say, oh, wow, for $299, I can buy all these things together and they all come in one package. It's brilliant. So rule number one about creating bundles and not making the mistake as everybody else is create a bundle that your customer actually wants. And there's ways to find this out. Research keyword research tools, and other research methods. Do you know that my wholesale bundle system has a 12-step research method that we go through vetting and looking to see what customers are looking for, what are they trying to buy surrounded by this keyword, and how do we build a bundle that they absolutely can't wait to buy? Everything's all in one package. Everything all comes together. It complements each other, one another. This is not your typical, uh, let's throw in some sticky notes or a keychain or something with our brand on it to keep other people off of our fiber one listing. Like, honest to goodness, that's not how we do bundles. You're not just trying to get around the rules to make a couple extra dollars. Y'all, there's money to be made. Go look on Alibaba. Go look on India Mart. Go look on Global Source and look at all of the products available. There is money to be made. Stop looking where everyone else is looking and actually do some research. The number one bundle mistake is trying to get around the rules of Amazon and trying to do what everyone else is doing in, in, in any sort of backdoor way. The number one bundle mistake to avoid. If you are just trying to, to make more money on Amazon, and you just want some fast, easy products, do some product research and import. But if you want sustainable customers that are happy with what you're purchasing and you want to make them very happy and you want to save them some money, build them a bundle. Y'all, there's so many categories, so many. And I think that people are just wanting to, you want instant success. 
but it's not that's not how it happens it's not how it works you actually have to do the work first not piggybacking off of all the work that someone you think someone else did but doing the work first looking at what customers are wanting and purchasing not just what's trendy how about what's not trendy how about what people buy over and over and over again I don't mean just consumables. I mean things that are just constantly, oh, this wears out or, you know, every couple of years I need to buy this or that. But guess what? There's millions of people globally. So mistake number one to avoid. Don't just build bundles piggybacking off somebody else. Don't just try to get around Amazon's rules by saying, oh, I can't really, I am restricted in this brand, but now I want to put it in my bundle so that I can sell it because it's a hot selling product cat food or, um, you know, like iPhone cases. I mean, there's just so much competition. There's so much competition. Even starting in the grocery category, there's so much competition. People are just trying to make a whole bunch of different things. Well, get creative. Get creative. There's ways to get ideas. Do you know we have a whole series called Bundle Ideas Revealed? There's four seasons full of different bundle ideas. You know how many people actually take those ideas and run with them? Not many. Even if when we hand package them and give them to you, here's a bundle idea, here's a bundle idea. There's always some reason why people won't do something. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is branded, name branded bundles without written consent. That is the second number one, <laughs> second number one, the second biggest mistake to avoid, if not the biggest. The biggest is really not following the policies, just really trying to get around saying, hey, I've got this. I'm going to buy a UPC code so I can slap this on here and not have a G10 exemption and just sell something until Amazon takes me down. Yeah, you can make a handful of dollars with that, but it's not going to be evergreen and ongoing and sustainable. Do you always, always, always want to feel like you're grinding and hustling? Or do you want something that you can put on repeat? And that doesn't mean that this is passive. Y'all, if anyone tells you that Amazon is passive income, they are lying to your face. This is not passive. This is very active. You are inventory-based business. You have to buy and sell a product or a good. You are not passive income. Now, that doesn't mean that you're shipping every single order. That's part of the passivity of it. Is it unlike a eBay, for example, where you are literally fulfilling your own orders every single time? You know, if you get 10 orders a day, you're packaging up 10 orders a day and sending them out. That is that is even less passive than Amazon to where Amazon FBA, you're sending all of your stuff into Amazon. They're checking it in. And as customers buy those items, whether it's three in the morning or three in the afternoon, they're shipping it on your behalf. So it is more passive than other e-commerce styles of business but it's not super passive. You have to be actively involved in your business. It's also not as involved as owning a brick and mortar store where you have to be open 12 hours a day and hire people and pay rent and have overhead and you know pay your utility bills and taking out the trash and everything else. So it's an in-between, but it's still an active business. Just like any other thing, every bundle has a life cycle. You're, you're gonna have to bring new bundles to the table on a regular basis. Just like any store brings regular inventory on a regular basis. As the seasons change, they had tank tops and bathing suits. Now they have sweaters and snow pants. And such is life. It goes on, the cycle continues. New products, new ideas. But what are the same steady eddies that people buy every single year without fail? Lots and lots of stuff. Maybe it's a new color. Maybe it's a new color scheme. Maybe it's something else, but there's not a whole lot of new things under the sun. So it's better to start aiming at places nobody's aiming at. Trying to make a quick dollar with a trend is never long-term sustainability. Okay, name brand bundles. Second biggest mistake after policy violations and trying to do black hat stuff to, to bring a bundle to the table is brand name bundles without consent. So just because something sells really, really well and you look at it and it doesn't seem like it has any sort of brand restrictions, it's a really big way to get into trouble. If you're using a, when I say a big brand name, I'm saying that like 90% of American households know the name brand. You're talking about Hershey's chocolate. You're talking about Nike. You're talking about KitchenAid. You're talking about even smaller 
household brands that most people know that are in regular grocery stores, regular stores, all throughout the country. There's also small brands that are very restricted on Amazon as well, but we're talking about bigger brands. And everyone thinks, oh, this brand sells so well and this product is really popular and blah, blah, blah. And that's true. But if you don't have written consent or in writing from a letterhead from somebody of that company that you can bundle their items, you're taking a risk. Now, that does not mean it's not it's, that it's against policy and you're not allowed to. If it's restricted on Amazon, yes, do not try to sell that in a bundle, in anything, mentioning the name or the keyword name. If it is restricted, that means that they have gone, that brand, that company has gone at great lengths to protect their name and their brand, and they will enforce it. So if you're trying to get around a rule because of a, of a brand name, you're going to get in trouble eventually. You they will, Even if they let your listing go through and you sell a few or a few hundred, eventually they will find you out and they will cancel your listing or remove it or give you some sort of policy violation. And then that goes against your account health. Once your account health gets below a certain number, they suspend you and hold your money. That's real. If you guys heard of Riverbend Consulting, we've had Leslie on here um, pretty much every quarter for the last several years, and they all they they do a lot of Amazon services. They all, they do reimbursement. They do everything else. Tell them mommy and come set you. You know I don't get any commission for this. I just love Riverbend and they do a great job at reconciling my inventory and and asking for invoices and we prove those things and whatever else. But they also get people out of Amazon jail is what I call it. <laughs> Amazon jail. If you are your whole account is suspended, uh, they are suspension experts. They help you to try to figure out um, what's gone wrong and and try to solve the problems with Amazon so you can get your account back. But in the meantime, it is a gut-wrenching headache to have your account suspended. They hold all your funds for up to 90 days or longer. And if you're in a major violation, they might never give it back. If they they feel they can prove that you made your money falsely, they have been known to hold on to it. So say you got $30,000 of payouts that's coming, they can hold that. So I just want you to pay attention to that. So brand name bundles. There are so many things to bundle that you don't ever have to use brand names. What do people search for? What are the customers searching for? They're not just searching for Nike socks. They're also looking for cute cat socks, cute socks for my boss. Something to give, this is actually a phrase that I've looked up on Amazon and on Merchant Words, which is my favorite keyword, you know, shameless plug for Merchant Words. Um, I still love Merchant Words. I've loved them since day one, and I still get the fastest, most comprehensive keyword research upfront data from them. It's just really easy to use. You can look up phrases and be like, oh, this phrase does better than this phrase. This phrase is searched this many times. This phrase is searched this many times. Love it. It's very straightforward and easy. Um, but what to get gifts for people who have gifts for people who have everything. I mean, you could make a bundle that's gifts for people who have everything and just put, I don't know, just be creative. There's so many different products, things that are funny, things that are entertaining. There's all, and it doesn't have to be a gift. I love the gift market because there's so many gifts to give people or um, for all kinds of reasons and occasions. Sometimes you just want to send somebody something because they did a great job. Sometimes a friend is down and you want to, or a lost a loved one and want to send some sort of memorial sympathy gift. Um, you know, gone are the days it seems like people aren't really sending greeting cards. And then you look at Amazon and realize that there's greeting card bundles that people have put together and are selling. I mean, brilliant, brilliant stuff, you guys, but it's not going to be your top 1%. You don't have to be in the top 1% to just sell bundles. Do some math. If you have a bundle every single month, if you have 12 bundles, you made one every single month for the next year and you have 12 bundles and each one of them is making you eight or $10 a piece and you sell 30 of them per month times 12, how much money is that? A decent salary, right? So what if you sell 50 of those a month? What about 100? I mean, we are not high volume. I think that's another thing that people realize is just in order to make money, you're not Walmart. You don't have to sell a million products at one penny of profit to make money. You can actually sell a lot less product for a little bit more meat on the bone for yourself. So 
name branded bundles without consent is a very, very high risk item. Now, do you have to go knocking on every single brand's door and ask them for permission to bundle their item? No, you don't. You actually don't. You don't have to have permission. But if an item is really well known and or restricted, don't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Just don't. If it's in a specialty store and it doesn't seem like they have a lot of uh, Amazon presence or no Amazon presence, that's a great opportunity for you to bring it to Amazon. And permission is helpful. It's not necessary or required, but you are running a risk of that company reaching out and saying, hey, this is a fraudulent item. Or you are you, you, you know, asking you to do the proof, right? So instead, sell something else did you know that like pencil pouches and things like that are just literally like you can find all kinds of purses bags clothing jewelry um containers storage um type of stuff like generic type items that people are constantly buying that don't have brand names but people are constantly searching for them name me a, 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 if it's not sold at neiman marcus you know some name brand high end something like your makeup bag. Like y'all have a makeup cosmetic bag, something like that. What is, who makes your makeup bag? What is the brand name of your coffee cup? Like, no, I don't know who made my coffee cup. I just know it says cheeks on it. I mean, you see what I'm saying? Your candles, your, your socks, your, um, you know, your kitchen utensils, the rugs on your floor, the art on your wall, the HDMI cords, your Christmas lights. Like, I mean, there's so, there's so many products, you guys. There's so many, even just don't even get me started on the gift market. I, I have, you know, so many different things to say there, but you don't have to have a branded item. People are looking for all kinds of items on a regular basis all kinds of items. You don't have to have brand names to sell well on Amazon. There's a lot of stuff. Go look, go look in your phone. I've said this a million times. I'm saying it again. Go look at your phone right now. Look at the last 10 items you purchased on Amazon. How many of those items are well-known brand name items that everyone would recognize? Or how many of them were just like, oh, I just need this. And it's, you know, generic. You find it on Amazon. Oh, this is great. You know, don't have to use name brands. Use attributes, color, size, shape, form, function. This is what people look for. Okay, doing the work first. Put the time in to do research. Do you know that product development, which is what a bundle is, by the way, you're developing a product. Now you're not inventing a product from scratch. This is what a wholesale bundle is. You're buying stuff that's already being manufactured by other people and putting it together in a kit or set that makes sense for your customer, that helps them, complementary items complimentary items. So I mean, selling a puzzle with puzzle glue and a puzzle mat or a puzzle frame, match made in heaven, right? There's people that do puzzles and they want to keep them forever. They don't just want to do all the work of doing a puzzle. They want to use puzzle glue and hang it on their wall as a beautiful picture or give it away. So that would be a match made in heaven, right? It enhances the user in some way, the customer. When you have products idea ideas, look them up. Put time into the research. If you're a product developer, which you are when you're doing a bundler, and you're a bundler, it takes time to put in the work and the research. Now, it doesn't have to take weeks and months. Sometimes people develop products for a year. I mean, I'm not suggesting that. I'm saying that this is a wholesale bundle, so you're not starting from scratch and making a mold and like making something brand new. But if you are, give yourself some time and space. Move forward every single day, but don't expect that you're going to have this done in two hours. Search for the bundle that you're thinking of creating and looking at the competition. Is there something out there? Are other people doing this? If so, how many other people? And is there room for your unique idea? Sometimes the unique idea is this only comes in black and I want to make it in a different color. Totally an option. Proving by research that other people want it in other colors other than black. Product research. Look everywhere. Did you know?
that Amazon is not the only place that people buy product, buy products. Can you believe it? <laughs> I mean, I know most of us like to go to Amazon first and most people go to Amazon first. Why? Because time, money, convenience, speed, convenience, variety. They have almost everything or and a selection of everything, not just the one or two, but they have a selection of everything and they're willing to deliver it to you in a couple days to your doorstep. That's why people look on Amazon first, but there's other websites. There's other places to buy stuff. People want things today. Then they have to look on Facebook marketplace or go to Walmart, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Look everywhere. Other people are selling and buying the same items in other places. Facebook marketplace, eBay, Etsy, Walmart, Google, Home Depot, Lowe's, Target. There's still stores go and see on their website, see what's going on, see what's popular, see what's on sale. Look at what people are buying and what they're buying together. And you'd be surprised at how many of those things are not really branded. Couple more bundle mistakes to avoid. Your photos and your title are everything. Bad bundle photos ruin everything. You want to have your white background crystal clear about what's in your bundle. So if you're looking at a bundle image on Amazon in your thumbnail on your phone, you want to look and be like, oh, wow, there's definitely multiple things in this, this, this bundle. You don't have to show that it comes in a gift box unless that's part of your presentation and then make it awesome. That is your, your listing, your photo, your very first and main photo is your ad. It's your advertisement. It's telling the world on Amazon, buy this item and here's why. So if you look at your image and you don't go, oh, that's amazing. I can't wait to read about what comes in here and I want to pay that. Then change your image. Take items out of the packaging. Oh my gosh, how many times have I seen this? To where you putting a bundle together, maybe retail arbitrage, something else, and you 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 want to say you're selling this thing and it's in cellophane and, you know, Take one for the team and take it out of the packaging. Proper size of pictures is really important. Take multiple shots. Use as many images as you possibly can. People shop with their eyes first. But the title. They can't find your item to see your image if you're not using a precise title. So many people put so much garbage into their title. You can't put Christmas, Mother's Day, Thanksgiving, Halloween, all this stuff into your title and expect it to, to rank for anything at all. The algorithm is so confused about what you're selling that they can't show it to anybody because you've confused it. So say what it actually is and almost who it's for. So if you are doing the guitar bundle for beginners, then say it. This is a guitar bundle. But beginner's guitar bundle includes guitar, amp, strap, picks. Now, there's, al there's always debate. There will always be because Amazon doesn't reveal their exact algorithm and how they do things. And they're always, you know, showing things to different people in different demographics all the time. And we will never, ever understand because that's proprietary for them, I guess, and their company. Um, to uh, what their algorithm is. So. Be precise about what your item is. If the keywords aren't ranking very high, use different keywords. Make sure you're exact. Get creative. Go use keywords everywhere. Use relatedwords.org to find other words that also relate to your item. If you're selling a beginner's guitar set, make sure that you're saying that over and over a couple of times. Once in the title, a couple times in the description, a couple times throughout your bullet points. It will make sure the algorithm knows this is exactly what this is. And then when people come there and buy it, it's, con it's confirmation. It's like the light bulb goes off and says, the customer has ser searched for this. This is what they found and bought. These words must match this listing and now you're ranking up. If you have so much garbage in your title because you're just trying to slam every single keyword in there, you're not going to be found. And then worse, if you put PPC on that, you're just wasting money. You're just wasting money. 
You don't want to jam a bunch of miscellaneous keywords in there because you think, oh, if somebody's searching for coffee beans, they might find my coffee mug and want to buy it. No, no, no. Be precise about what your item is. And remember that humans look for stuff like cute retirement gifts for women. There you go. Inexpensive gift for my boss. Mm -hmm. Look at those phrases. You can actually rank for that phrase. And then it can be whatever you want it to be. Doesn't matter what's in it. What people are looking for is ideas. Retirement gift ideas for women. Your photos and your title are your ad. So before you even spend money on PPC, you want to make sure that your ad, your listing, your images are what you would want to see and buy. It's worth the effort. Individual and group shots using Canva or Photoshop or pixels or, you know, whatever. Canva is the best. Like, if you're not using Canva to do your pictures, they have so many. And, and Canva Pro, it makes people like me be able to edit photos. Like, <laughs> I'm not very good at it. And Photoshop, forget about it. Like, I just, it's not my wheelhouse. But if you don't even want to do it, you can hire someone on Fiverr to do it. That's how you can make your A-plus content. Make it visually appealing. Amazon's giving you room to make visually appealing listings. Your title and your photos are most important. People are scared to not buy high quality items. So if your images look good, they're going to trust you more and want to buy your item. And finally, give yourself some time before making changes. This is another bundle mistake. People throw a bundle on Amazon and then within a couple of days, it doesn't have any feedback or it doesn't have any listings, doesn't have any traffic and they want to throw PPC at it. Check for ind indexing. Troubleshoot your listings. Troubleshoot them. Make small changes one at a time. Keywords, bullets, title. Make sure someone else across the country, maybe you have a friend or family member that can organically search for your item. Not just with your ASIN, but with your keywords. If it's not indexing, if it's not showing, then there's an issue. Sometimes it's within your upload. Sometimes it's in a browser node somewhere. But after a week or so, a couple of weeks, make sure it's indexing, checking it, small changes. But don't launch your item and then throw PPC at it and hope for the best. Make sure that it's it's well optimized. These are just some of the major mistakes to avoid. There's so many people that just want to throw bundles up in the air, but there is a process to this. There's policies and processes. Do you know them? If not, sorry. If you don't know these policies, it's time for you to get to know them. If you don't know how to properly put a bundle together, you haven't had the proper training, you need the wholesale bundle system. From the window to the wall, it teaches you everything, including brand registry, including how and where and to design your packaging to Amazon approval, to sending in your shipments, Labeling your products. How a 12 step program, a 12 step program, a 12 step framework process to help you research, to decide are these good items? How do we price them? How do we put them into a bundle that people will love? Research is what it takes. It's not just hoping to put two brand name items together and hoping you can get by the Amazon rules so that you can hopefully sell a couple more items. Y'all, just sell single unit items then and be a cutthroat competition like everyone else. But don't just try to get around the rules by sort of half-ass putting a bundle together. Think about your customer. Think about the person that's going to buy that item and why you're putting it together to begin with. The who, what, when, where, why, and how of your bundle, if you can't answer that, you don't have a good bundle. Who is it for? 
What purpose does it serve? How is the customer going to be happy with this? Why would they buy your bundle versus all the items individually and separately? What are you bringing to the table with your bundle that people are like, oh yeah, that's what I want. So think about those things. Think about those things. Think about those bundles and bundle in that way. Don't make the name brand bundle mistakes. Don't make the mistakes of not knowing the policies. And make sure that your title and your photo use the whole who, what, when, where, why, and how of your bundle. It's the most important things to think about. Now there's tons of other things as well. Maybe I'll have a part two of bundle mistakes because there's so many other things that we can go through with these bundle mistakes, but those are the top three for now. And if you're making any of those mistakes, it's time to revamp. It's time to think, who's, who am I buying this bundle for? Who, what, when, where, why, and how of it? Y'all, mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe. Make sure that you're getting these videos. You're making these adjustments. You're subscribing so that you can get all the information and the motivation that you need to keep going and keep bundling. Y'all, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. And we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.